everyone, today I'm gonna have a very, very cool video and I'm gonna get a lot of new knowledge and you're gonna be there with me. So this is Action to Reaction and please follow me on Instagram, like, share and of course subscribe my channel. So uh, be ready because today we're gonna uh, watch video the states plus territories of India explain geography now. So I'm ready and join me. Hey everybody, before we start, this video is sponsored by a good sponsor that we found, one that I actually believe in and personally endorse, oh, Sekera. Started. It's a geography quiz game. We'll get back to it later. But first, as you guys know, this is a filler week video. And by popular request, we are doing the states of India. Now, the thing states about India, India is that it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states, yeah. mostly because of the people groups or the languages, stuff like that. So before we get into this, just keep in mind, I am not Indian. I have never even been to India. So really? in order to make this video, I had to talk to a lot of you guys I've read a lot of your emails and comments and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based off of what you guys the Indian jug peeps have said so kind of you know if I get anything wrong it's you know kind of your fault so <laughs> let's just jump into it the 29 states and the seven Union territories Andhra Pradesh the capital Amaravati now this is an interesting state because it kind of has wow. the fastest growing GDP in all of India over 16% in the past few years over here they speak Telugu and Thank this you. guy wrote this play which is kind of considered like the most prominent Telugu play in all of Indian history. Otherwise, they're famous for the Kuchipudi dance, one of the eight classical Kuchipudi. styles of Indian dance. And uh, yeah, they have great beaches and caves. Arunachal Pradesh, capital Itangar. This is the region that's kind of disputed with China, although it is administered Just by India. In order to get in as a foreigner, you will need a restricted area permit. Otherwise, culturally, it kind of takes cues from Tibet, you know, the whole like Buddhism thing mm. going on. There's quite a few Buddhists here. People here are super friendly. They're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets. Assam, yes. capital Ispur. Assam. Now, if you watch the India episode, you know that I talked about Assam. the seven sisters in Northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk. Yeah. And the silks are kind of made based off of Did what they actually the feed the silkworms. It's interesting. They're yeah, also known for wow. preserving the incredibly rare one-horned Indian rhinoceros. And uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Assam. It awesome. It's awesome. Bihar. Yeah, capital it's awesome. Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Wow. Lots of famous sites for Buddhism. Supposedly they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama I sat like under. That. Otherwise on the Hindu side I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hard-working people. Chhattisgarh, capital Naya Raipur. From what I was I told, this, this is kind of like a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal and they are kind of one of the poorest states. And oh. there is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government. Government. But otherwise, generally the people here are just nice, but there's just a little bit of controversy, mm. that's all. Goa. This is the oh, Vegas of India. It, it was a former Portuguese Vegas. colony, <laughs> and uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just flock over and take over everything. Great beaches, bars, and Not cool these days, I must tell you. The people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists <laughs> that give it the crazy vibe. But yeah, Goa, it's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation. You of want course. To go uh, to go. Well, Good place to go for vacation. Gujarat, capital Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra mm -hmm. Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they wow. have one of the largest salt deserts in the wow, world. Wow, they wow. have this forest which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot, Gandhi oh. was also from here. They are voted the number one ease of business state in India. The people here are very good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Also, no alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay. Yeah, that it's one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, uh, people that can handle money really well come from Gujarat. Haryana, capital Chandigarh, which is mm -hmm. shared with Punjab. Long story. Haryana, <laughs> I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known oh. as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have one of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous for having mm -hmm. a lot of people that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Himachal Pradesh, which has two capitals. The summer one, Shimla, and the winter one, oh, Darshala. So this and is this kind of also... known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama. But it's actually kind of known oh. as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians it's love to amazing. visit. It's known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture-wise, wow. again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, yes, uh, cool yes. state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape. Uh, people like to visit for uh, vacations. Jammu and Kashmir also has two capitals. The summer one, mm -hmm. Srinagar, and the winter one, <gasps> wow. Jammu. I have to be very 
very careful with this one. Why? Because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and mm -hmm. India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, yeah. the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. 68%? It used to be ruled under really? these princely states. And it's funny because like the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through like multiple wars. But yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jharkhand, mm -hmm. capital Ranchi. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. Mm -hmm. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? The Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine, and uh, famous cricketer Doni came from here as well. Karnataka, yeah, capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital Bengaluru is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. Oh. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city, and wow. they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India at less than one percent. Otherwise, they're known for having the Hampi ruins. And it's beautiful. Speak Canada, or I, is that how you pronounce? I was told Kanada. it's pronounced Canada, but some people have said. Canada, like <laughs> Kerala, capital Tiruvannakapuram. Wow, this is a board. So one one. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. And today uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians and they all kind of speak Malayalam. Malayalam? Say wow. it with me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam or Malayam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall. So is it Kerala or Kerala? Like literacy and HDI and Kerala? all the other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take point from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal, the heart of India, the history state with mm. tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbetka rock shelters, you have the uh, Kajurahal so temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit images going on. A lot of you have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984. And I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh. Maharashtra, capital Maharashtra. Mumbai. This is the richest state and the second most populous, third largest in area. It's kind of wow. like the New York and Los Angeles of <gasps> India. It's like the economic hub and the entertainment hub. Bollywood yeah. is over here. Tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams. I mean, aside from all that though, they yeah. do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical wow. sites as well. But yeah, Maharashtra is kind of like the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off of and expands outwards from. It pushes wow. India forward. Manipur, capital Impal. This is one of the seven sister states. A lot of the people here, just like all the other seven sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having mm. their own distinct hill tribes. Yes, Five-time world amateur <gasps> boxing She's champion so Mary cool. Kong came Mary from Kong. here. They're also known for having these cool floating islands. Floating islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital Shilong. This place is known as the abode of rain and they're kind of like the water people of I India. I like it. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting wow. matrilineal tribes tribes and they have really cool foggy hills wow. but yeah cool hill people with their own customs and uh the water people Mizoram, capital Aizal, the land of blue mountains. This is the most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly, so they even have eco-tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point. Just very quickly before we move on to the next one, just want to say thank you to Cetera, our sponsor for this video. Oh. Cetera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually okay. download on Android or iOS at this link right here. Or you can just go to the website site and play. There are tons of games you can choose from here. You got a lot of things like regions, physical landscapes, capitals. You can even custom create your own game. And they actually made a Geography Now game. Not only that, but the game also comes in 34 different languages. It's really fun. I totally recommend you guys check it out. Go to online.setera.com. <laughs> Nagaland, capital Kohima. This is like the most Christian state of India, but they also still kind of retain their own indigenous tribal cultures and customs, famous for the Hornbill Festival. And it's funny because like they're very westernized, but they know that the tourists come in and so they kind of have to like put on their traditional costumes and put on a show. But it's like, hey, eh, whatever, and eh, whatever makes us money. Odisha, formerly known as Orissa, capital Odisha. known as the land of cyclones. It's also known for being like the ISRO's launch site for their yeah. satellite programs. This is one of 
of the three states that never broke up throughout all of Indian statehood history. It's kind of known as like the state that bridges the north and south. They speak the Oriya language. They have an amazing wetland and mangrove park where oh, you can find like tigers tiger. and elephants. Probably the most famous landmark being the Sun Temple of Konark, Punjab, capital Chandigarh, shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys had stuff mm -hmm. to say about Punjab. Overall, a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially yeah. thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really yeah. nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, Golden the Golden Temple. Temple. And there's a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur, the land of Rajas or kings. It's the largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up. And there are just endless forts and palaces found yeah, in the state. It has things place. like a camel fair. Supposedly, I was oh, told they handsome. have like the best henna artists. Keep in mind, food-wise, they keep things very spicy. And it is, at about 75% of the population, the most vegetarian state in India. Vegetarian. Wow kings in the sand. Sikkim, <laughs> capital Gangtok. Now this is an interesting one because it kind of joined India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese. Hmm. It used to be its own kingdom and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is as of right now the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. It is almost completely organic. As in wow. they don't believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air, they love nature, and they love, uh, they're just, it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India. Tamil Nadu, capital Chennai. Now, if you want real, like, South Dravidian Indian culture, you come here. This is, like, straight up the southern capital of India. It looks so the main different. language they speak, of course, is Tamil, Tamil, which is completely unintelligible to Hindi. They have so many temples, including the largest functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically, Angkor Wat wow. is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's no longer active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of Rajnik Ant. Telangana, capital Rajnik Hyderabad, Ant. the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told it's oh, kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're yeah. like, hey, we're making a lot of money, but you guys are dragging us down. So we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, yes, we can. Make your own capital. Yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also famous for <laughs> Tollywood or Telugu. Hollywood and it's interesting because yeah. they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams you can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets Tripura capital Agartala I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded heard by about Bangladesh. This so no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. Uh, horse yeah, polo. Uh, I think out of all the states, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomaly. It's just like the mystery state. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uttar Pradesh, capital of yeah. now. This is the Taj Mahal state. And it's kind of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom <laughs> come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the past few years. And now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, oh. one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot like of fertile them. land over here, lots of spices and agriculture happening mm. in this state. Very key important player in all of India. You cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Jim Corbett? Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, Urvashi. capital Calcutta, or Kolkata. They changed the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India, technically. If you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India. Aww. They're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some yes. of the greatest minds from India, like this guy came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. Now we reach the Union Territories, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, capital Port mm -hmm. Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on Earth, the Sentinelese. You are not allowed to visit their island. It's also home to Indian
as only volcano. Chandigarh. Now this is interesting. Chandigarh. It's the capital of both Punjab and Haryana, but it's also a union territory in itself. It's brought Basically, about? this was a planned city that was built because they gave Lahore to Pakistan. And it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in India. It's it beautiful. It was a new city. Wow. Nagra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. There's the interesting thing. Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These union territories. <laughs> These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Bakshadweep <laughs> means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. So you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sandbanks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Keep in mind that this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the politicians go and the worst the drivers in India, I was supposed the most. to be told. And even though they are a territory, they still have their own legislative assembly. It's, a, it's weird. But yeah, busy people, making laws, causing controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is the French-speaking area of India. Here you really? Can also find Oroville. They Never Hibigo heard Hibigo about that. kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia. Then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah look into it. But yeah, French speaking Indians. Indians. And that is that! Once again, thank you to you guys, all the Indian geography peeps that helped me out with this video by giving information. I hope I got um, most of it right. But yeah, in a nutshell, India has so many different types of people groups and languages and cultures and traditions and customs. It's like you can't summarize it all in one video. And obviously this one didn't even scratch the surface. But for what it's worth, beautiful country, and I'm so glad and honored to have done this video. Thank you, stay cool, stay tuned. Great. <laughs> Wow, I enjoyed this video first of all because it was so much informative and you know after I've seen like oh I know so much about India, I have been to India, I watch all the time uh, movies and uh, some other videos about India and still I all the time is able to find something new for myself and I cannot say that I knew everything what this guy told and of course I understand because there are so many states and for each state it was like I don't know five seconds uh, so he gave so it's not possible to say very much in this much time but I guess he just wanted to emphasize uh, something the most important about each so it would be um, really interesting for us and we would know something new about that so it was great and uh, I liked the video uh, so, uh, you know that I have been to India many times but mostly it was only Delhi and also I was one time in Jaipur and I went to Taj Mahal um, and Goa, of course Goa, how could I forget to say about that? So I was twice to Goa uh, uh, this year in February and uh, almost five years ago as well. And by the way, uh, also I can say like it was very big change and uh, I really loved it this time even more than five years ago. So this is great. There is a lot of development and uh, I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Whoever is from Goa, I had a great vacation over there. <laughs> so um, it was really interesting because honestly, uh, some uh, names of state I heard a lot of times and I knew about them, but some names um, I really my, maybe here of course because I saw map and everything but it's not in my mind in my head and uh, there was new information about those places uh, like what I know like my husband is actually Punjabi and uh, I know I guess mostly about Punjab uh, and uh, about those uh, like golden temple and the, those places which are there uh, but about some other um, states I know less uh, also, I like uh, South Indian food very much and Punjabi food as well and honestly I cannot say that I like, uh, you know, only this kind of food or only that, that kind of food. It's like I like some dishes from like South Indian, some dishes from Punjabi, some from some other states. Uh, I really enjoyed food in Jaipur. Uh, I really enjoy my stay in India, first of all because of people. Uh, I really feel uh, very welcoming and acceptable and uh, for this I'm really very grateful for everyone, for all the Indians because uh, you're very nice with foreigners and uh, no matter like how they came with uh, what are in their minds and that's awesome. Thank you for this and 
stay like that and I'm pretty sure this is the reason why India has so much of tourism. So I hope you like my reaction on this awesome video. Please follow me on Instagram, I'm waiting. Uh, like this video and uh, subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.